It was one of those nights. One of those nights you remember for a long, long time. They only come around once in a blue moon, but can make you forget the rest of the year in a hurry. That was Nina. And she put other dames to shame in the same way. Oh, she could make sour milk sweet. She had legs that would, that would go on for days like they would never end. And she was my kryptonite. My one weakness. And it was only a matter of time. Asking. I haven't figured that'd be obvious since I'm the only one here. Things aren't always what they seem, dollface. You're saying you're not alone? You bastard! I see not much has changed. Forget about her. I have. <sighs> I knew you didn't really love me. That was my maid. And she's not doing what you're paying her for. Or maybe she is, and that's why the place hasn't been clean. So you haven't lost your sense of humor. Keep it in my front pocket with all your empty promises. Cigarette? No oh, thanks, I quit smoking. It's dangerous. Are you afraid of danger? Of course not. No real man is. Well, you know what, why don't you uh, give me one of those cigarettes? Sorry, can't help you. Why not? I quit smoking too. Goodbye, Eddie. Wait a minute. I said I quit smoking cigarettes. I didn't say I quit beautiful women. That was your problem. If you loved me, you would have quit them too. My heart was yours and you know it. I gave it to you and you threw it out on the sidewalk. Got ran over by a a librarian who was late for work. Who was that redhead that was all over you last night at the Copa? Nothing. Working an angle on me. She tried to sit on my lap while I was still standing up. I... I don't like pushy broads. You gotta tell me something? And don't try, they do. Why won't you look at me? Just watch the sunset. Man can only take so much beauty in one night. I think this belongs to you. So I have some big news. What, you're finally getting a haircut? You think I need a haircut? <laughs> you might need a serious trim. I just got a trim. <laughs> no, I'm not getting a haircut. I'm moving to Los Angeles. What? You're joking, dude. You... Ah, oh, you almost had me there for a second. <laughs> no, 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 I'm serious. I bought my ticket. I'm leaving in four days. You said you'd never set foot in that I city. I know, I know. I mean, you're leaving Chicago, the greatest city in the world, to go to La La Land? Yeah. When did this happen? It was a few weeks ago. I was up all night, and it just, just hit me. I've been sleepwalking through life. I need to just get out there and see what happens. This came from staying up one night? Not all from one night, actually. It was building up for a while. A friend of mine from college who lives in LA, he called me up and he asked me what I was doing with my life. I had nothing to say. You know, life gives you so many choices. And you have to make a decision or else you'll be stuck at the fork in the road for the rest of your life. It does make you want to stay up every night and try to squeeze all the moments out of life. Maybe not every night, but life was meant to be lived. You know, there's only right now. Isn't that what you used to say? Yeah, and it's true. I did say that all the time, but I wasn't listening to my own advice. I am now. Well, people are always obsessed with the future or living in the past or really just stuck somewhere in between. Yeah. And if time is all compressed together, there really only is now. There never really is tomorrow or yesterday or even 10 minutes from now. Like this globe. Sure, it's, what, morning in Chicago and evening in China, but there's not really a 12 hour difference. In both places, we're doing what we're doing right now. And if we spin this thing a thousand times, whether it's 500 years in the past or a thousand years in the future, 
whatever happens at those times, it all happens in the present moment. Yeah. You know, that's what I think UFOs are. Well, but we're not talking about UFOs. No, seriously. Seriously. I mean, maybe all the weird stuff we see up in the sky are just images from the, the past and the future colliding into each other. Maybe they're just all layers on top of each other. Maybe. So you can't put anything off for tomorrow since tomorrow doesn't exist. Exactly. And I just let way too many things take control of where my life was headed. I'm ready to just start all over. In a few days, when I wake up and head out west, it's gonna be a new me. Well, sounds like you're ready to get out there and take over. All I have to do is find a job and a place to live, but how hard could that be, right? Yeah. So that's my life. What are you up to? Well, Max and I are working on a graphic novel together. I think we may have finally found someone to help us publish it. Excellent. What are these? Uh, just a few uh, characters and some character descriptions. Ooh. She's gorgeous. Uh, yeah, she is. Well, you should come out to California for a visit. And hey, if things fall through, there's always more room in La La Land for another out-of-work writer. I don't know. Maybe. What's up, Max? Is that my yo-yo? Yes. It's mine. <laughs> Max. Hey, what's up? You guys having a little tea party? <sighs> no, nah, we're just sitting here talking to get some tea. <laughs> That's a tea party. <laughs> should actually get going. Good luck, Eddie. Thanks. Remember, life is short. Don't wait for tomorrow. I won't. See you later, Max. Take it easy. I guess we should get back to work. I'm gonna put this in water first. Mm. Who is it for? Not you. Memorizing state capitals now? No, I'm just thinking. About what? I always wanted to be one of those people who could just hop on an airplane and go anywhere. Now Hemingway wasn't afraid of anything. This is it. Wherever my finger lands, that's where I'm headed next. Landed on Chicago, didn't it? I guess I'm not one of those people who just hops in an airplane and heads somewhere. Should be to get you those new pages pretty soon. Should be about 50 or so new ones. 50 new pages? Are you kidding? Uh, no, I can't count them for you if you want me to. Eddie, how long is this project gonna take? I mean, it would have been easier for me to illustrate the Bible or the telephone book than this. That actually sounds like a pretty good idea. Seriously, man, we gotta talk about editing this thing down to something that people are gonna, I don't know, read someday. It took James Joyce 11 years to write Finnegan's Wake. And he said it should take people 11 years just to read it. What are you now, James Joyce because you can't stop writing? What are you getting so worked up for? Eddie, this started out as a favor. I mean, I want us to work all the time on stuff. Maybe even get paid someday. I've written one song in the last three months, and this thing keeps getting longer and longer. Well, I have a lot to say. Eddie, we're broke. We bought three reams of paper, and, and somehow we've almost run out. And we haven't even finished the story yet. 
And can I be honest? Sure. Is this supposed to be Nina? No, I... I traced it out of a magazine. It's just some random model. I, I drew that so that way you can get a basic idea of what the character should look like. Okay. But it just looks like it is. You know? And I know you swear up and down that this is not some kind of obsession project about her, but clearly it is. Can we just get back to work, please? Alright? I mean, you know I was talking and you could have been done with the page by now. Well, that only leaves 4,000 more. Good for me. Were you playing my guitar? Hmm? What? Oh, uh, no. I left it on the guitar stand and I just found it on my bed. Max, you're crazy. I, I know the guitar roll. Do you? Because I don't think you do. Well, you, I didn't play it. You know, I can tell if you did because you, my friend, are tone deaf and have no idea how to tune a guitar. <sighs> Max, I didn't play the guitar. Why don't you just tell me and we can be done with this? I'm not gonna lie to you to make you feel better. Play your stupid little E chord. I, I can don't tell. Care. I just need to play one chord and Go that's ahead. it. I'm gonna do it right now. Ready? to save money. What are you eating? A freeze-dried ice cream snack from NASA. <laughs> Eddie, we can't afford paper, let alone a new hat and some astronaut snacks. Mm. Don't worry about it. Got it all under control. Come in. God, you boys haven't packed anything. I've been telling you guys for weeks. Wait, weeks? This is the real world, okay? And in the real world, people pay money to live places. When you leave here and you find a new place to live, here's my suggestion, pay them money. I, I told you we're good for it. What does that mean good for it? Pack this place up, pack it all up. Pack up the guitar, you don't even play guitar. Pack up your crayon drawings, pack up your apartment. Make sure you get your comic book collection, because I don't want it here. I don't have time to pack up comic books, you know what I mean? And, and what's the deal with your ridiculous desk? Do you even fit in that desk? You don't fit in that desk. Are you guys four? You're four years old, you're pretending you're back in school? Want me to call your mommy? You don't have a place to live, but you have a tiny desk. That doesn't make sense. And take that ridiculous mask, too. The thing's scary. thinking maybe we should throw a party tonight you know tonight should be a night to remember were you not here just earlier <laughs> you remember that lady that came in yeah the mean lady yes. our landlord yes, she I called did. us little men mm -hmm. made fun of your school desk yeah i don't think throwing a party is a good idea you know what i'm starving maybe we should go get something to eat then we can start calling people what are you uh getting married tonight not in the mood. No, seriously, where are you going? I, I have a date. I told you like a hundred times. No, you didn't. I would have remembered. Well, I have to make it a short night anyway because I have to come back and pack. 
and then find a place she to stay is not while I look for a new place to, to live. throw us out. She said it like a million times already. I mean, when has she ever actually gone through with it? Yeah, but has she ever actually gone through with it? Well, still. No. No, she hasn't. You remember when we found that grand piano downstairs in the alley? We tried to hoist it up here through the window and it fell and crushed that ice cream <laughs> cart. Almost killed that guy. That, that was pretty funny. <laughs> you know, if she didn't throw us out for that, she's not going to throw us out for not paying rent for a bit. Wait, not paying rent for a bit? I thought you were taking care of it. I am. You remember Paul from Galaxy Comics? Yeah. Well, he knows this dentist who comes to the store all the time. He told the dentist about our book. The dentist said that he thought it was a good idea and agreed to invest in it. Actually, make it happen. So what does that have to do with our rent? He gave us his half of the investment up front. That along with the <laughs> rent money that we saved from not paying rent. I mean, we could actually make this happen. So you still have all the money? Yeah. I mean, if you don't think that the plan will work, I'll give you your cash back, no problem. Today's June 16th, isn't it? Yeah. Well, this is for June 17th at 8 a.m. That's tomorrow morning. I don't think she's gonna let us off the hook this time, Eddie. She doesn't mean it. Are you insane? Look, I gotta go. Oh, well, I'm starving. I'm gonna go get something to eat anyway. I'll walk with you. When you finish your book, we should create a superhero. <laughs> like superpowers and everything? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, superpowers are just another form of perverted narcissism. All of them? All of them. All of them. All of them except for Superman's indestructibility. I mean, he, he had them all together. Now, that's smart. I mean, they're given those superpowers in order to, to make the world better. And most of them are just selfish. I mean, all of them are just selfish, actually. That might be your problem. I mean, who says they exist for the benefit of others? Are you insane? I mean, they're given those powers in order to make the world better and to stop us from ruining ourselves. I mean, they're all different to help us realize our potential and to, to, to save us from stuff. I mean, Godzilla came from nuclear bombs. His whole being, his whole existence is a warning to us. So just because somebody can fly, that means they have to save the world. <laughs> yes. Yes. I mean, but, but not just flying. I mean, flying is the worst. I mean, you can fly in a, in, in a helicopter or an aeroplane or a, or a hang glider. I mean, flying is redundant. And x-ray vision makes no sense also. I mean, so you can see through something. I mean, what if you get shot? What if you get shot? I mean, a lot of help you'd be then, you know? And when we started on invisibility, I mean, you give 10 guys invisibility, they'd all be hanging out at the, at the mall somewhere or, or in a women's locker room somewhere. Not one of them would try and save the world. I mean, that's the reason why female superheroes are so practical, you know? I mean, Wonder Woman's jet is invisible, not her. You know, those, uh, those bulletproof wrist bracelets? Well, she, can, she can really get the job done. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, having said all that, if you could have any superpower, what would you have? Hmm. Visibility. See you. <laughs> <laughs> I think you may have been stood up, my friend. No, she's just late. Max, I'm starving, dude. Well, then go. I'm a big boy. No, I'm not gonna leave you standing here on the corner. I can be your out. Like, if you, if she comes up and your first thought is to run, I can be the reason why you can just leave her standing here on the corner. And use like a, like a code word or something. Code word? Like, um, like timpani. Timpani? How am I gonna use that in a sentence? I don't know. It's just my first thought. I'm going to go and try and call her. I'm so sorry I'm late. You don't look anything like I pictured. Oh. Not that that's a bad thing. Oh, no. Am I what you pictured? I no, mean... I'm, I'm not. Well, you're, this, this is Max. Oh. 
Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi, it's great to finally meet you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> uh, timpani, timpani, timpani. Hey. Yes, it was really nice of you to bring someone along. Make me feel more at ease. Really, it's very sweet. <laughs> no, he was just waiting with me. Uh, he has a lot to do tonight. Yeah, like I, do, I do. Well, actually, well, I'm to... just going to go get something to eat. That's all. Well, I'm, then you I'm... should just eat with us. Max, I can get to know you better with your best friend with us. Really, it'll be great. Let's go. Oh, you were like... You're like my best friend. Have an appetizer and then you have to leave. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Three slices of cheese. Anything else? Yes. Um, and? Oh, just a second. Where are your bathrooms? Oh, they're in the back. You need to get a key from the front uh, counter. Oh, One second. A key from the front counter? Yes. Everybody does it. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not really interested in what other people are doing. See, I, I want to wash my hands before I eat. I really don't want to have to carry a, a dirty frisbee to the bathroom. I mean, what is this, a gas station or something? It's just the way it is. <laughs> well, can you uh, can you go back there and open the door for me? No, your highness, I can't. Well, it's your key. You certainly can open it. I can open the front door for you if you like. Okay. Um, Sheila. All right. I'm sorry. We got off on the wrong foot, okay? Let me ask you a question. What's the real reason you've got a key? Bathrooms are for paying customers only. Oh, 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 to keep the homeless people out. I, I see. So you have a key and they don't have a key, so they'll get confused and they won't be able to use your precious bathroom. We have the right to refuse service to anybody. No, no you don't. Wait, 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 wait. He's sorry, he's had a long day. We promise we'll do it. Please. Soon. What movie are we going to see? Don't you have some packing to do? Oh, no, I'm just asking. I haven't been to the Fullerton in a really long time. And you won't be going there anytime soon. Why? It burned down last week. What? Yeah, is that where we were gonna go? It's gone, boys. The owner, I think, is even in jail for insurance fraud. Didn't you hear, like, the hundred fire checks last Friday? Wow. It's so depressing. I really like that old theater. No, I really like that old theater smell. If I was ever going to make a cologne, I would make it smell like an old movie theater. It would smell popcorn, hint of junior mints, and you know what I'd call it? Matinee. Hmm. We can just go to another theater. <sighs> no, you seem like a really nice person, but that's like saying, don't pay any attention to this old dying person here. You could always get a new and improved grandpa. So the Fullerton is like your grandpa? He gets emotional about things. We should go to my roommate's birthday party. Eddie has to be going. <clears throat> Eddie has a lot of work to do. Not just physical work, but spiritual work as well. Deep, complex work inside himself. Seriously? Yes. Seriously. Well, you should still come anyway. We throw these parties all the time, but tonight is for my roommate's birthday. We can go to the movies any night, but this party is only one night. I guess. Why are you so concerned about me? Because your aura is all confused. You need to let the energy flow more, because it's all getting cluttered right here. Seriously? No. Not seriously, but parties are fun, so we should go. You know, we should let this party really set the tone for tonight. I mean, let's not look at it like it's a funeral. Let's, let's have some fun. So now you're ready to have fun. Oh, honey, I'm always ready to have some fun. I doubt that. <laughs> what did you have in mind? I don't know. Oh, maybe we should 
stay up and watch the sunrise. That's a great idea. It is? Yeah, I haven't done that in a really long time. Yeah, when you buy a ticket to the Yeti Express, you may not be happy with where it takes you. We can get off whenever we want. Ooh, really? <laughs> it's not what I meant. <laughs> well, let's have some fun tonight. Besides, it only takes like 10 minutes to pack. What are you packing? Mm, nothing, really. <laughs> we all agreed? Yeah, it's a plan. This is your place? Yeah, this is our place. My uh, my roommate's rich. Well, actually her father is, but I get to reap all the benefits as a roommate. I don't mean to alarm you, but I think I saw Nina. Whoa. So? I mean, if she's here, that's cool. Yeah, I believe that's your reaction. <laughs> well, Max, if she's cool, I'm cool. It's, it's not that serious. You're really not over her yet, are you? Yes. Yes, I am. I've been over her for like hours now. I really think that's her. What do you all do with your life? Hey, I'm sorry the party's kind of a dud, but since you're here, can I show you something that's kind of important to me? Sure. Great. Thank you must so much for the rose. That was really, oh, like that just spilled all over myself. I'm sorry. I wanted to show you is actually my portfolio. Oh. I'm actually a photographer. Really? Yes. I have a college degree and everything. Um, I don't, before I show you this, I'm trying to find the right next project for me, like where I'm gonna go. So these are things from the past couple years. Okay. So. Thank you so much for the rose. That was really thoughtful. Oh, no problem. Actually, you know, that was something that Max brought for Veronica and she gave it to you. Oh, happy birthday. Oh, thank so you. So how old are you, like 37? Um. Oh, wait, when were you in Paris? Um, three years ago. So, yeah. was, so was I. No. Yeah. That's I was. Weird, yeah. That is weird. Eddie? Eddie. Eddie. What are you doing? I've been standing in front of you for like 10 minutes. Um, I don't know. I don't know where I was just then. Still dating me, huh? I guess so. How have you been? Okay. Well, Nina, um... I just want you to know I'm not angry with you. What does that mean? Uh, that did not come out the way it was supposed to. I, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm very, very happy to see you. Why not just say that? Uh, I picture Nina. Nina, wait. Nina. This is my dog, Molly. Um, oh. I really miss her. She's not with us That's anymore. That's a great shot. Thank you. Oh, I like that a lot. Nice this is great stuff. You're very talented. Thank you. <laughs> what are you doing with yourself now? I'm, I'm great. I mean, uh, Max and I are, are, are writing a book together. We've got some offers for that. I'm, I'm writing a lot. I've got to look at some rental properties pretty soon. But, uh, you know, things are picking up. Seriously? Yeah. Yeah. You know, we should, um, we should hang out sometime. You know, being in each other's lives as friends. 
Maybe, maybe something more. That would never work. We both know that. We'd just be pretending like nothing ever happened. Just, do something crazy. Like what? I don't know. We're gonna stay up all night. We're gonna go see the sunrise. You know, Eddie, I'm sick. I've got to wake up for work tomorrow. Don't you have to work? Not tomorrow, no. And then, um, hmm. this is actually me. I was a nude model for an art class. Yes, you were. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. I think they're artistic. I kind of mm. forgot they were in here, but I like to hang on to them. Did you ever take an art class? Um, I'm sorry, what, what class? Kind of sweating a little. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you know, Maybe we should go back to the party. Okay. Okay. I'm only alive right now. You don't know how many sunrises you have left. Are you drunk? No. What do you have to lose? Honestly. We've known each other for almost our entire lives. We shared some pretty amazing moments together. And some pretty horrible ones too, but... No one knows me... Like you know me. No one. And if tonight is a boring night, the worst that'll happen to you is you'll be a little tired tomorrow. We never have to see each other ever again. But if tonight is amazing, then we have a chance to make it right between us. And if you even occasionally think about us, then you should come too. Well, I bet you two have a lot to talk about. Uh, do you want to go somewhere? No, you're not going to leave, are you? Well, I thought we were all going to watch the sunrise together. Hey, if he wants to go someplace, that's okay. No, no, tonight should, tonight should be about all of us. I just told you I was looking for a new project. I'm going to go get my camera. Well, if you guys don't want to go with us, it's fine. Well, it's okay. <laughs> Team Sunrise? Boo. Well, this place hasn't changed much, has it? Oh, a couch. Cool desk. It reminds me a lot of the ones we used to have at school. Oh, well, believe it or not, it is the ones we used to have at school. It's my old desk. I saved it. It's actually the uh, the one that I wrote. Uh, I love Nina in. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's sweet and creepy all at the same time. <sighs> it's not creepy. I mean, they were just throwing them out. Whose art is this? My niece and nephew, they sent me stuff almost every day. God, I wish I could draw like that again. <laughs> That's the way I draw now. It doesn't do me any good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean how honest it is. It's just drawing for the sake of drawing. Smell of the crayons, the big blank paper. Not having to worry about the end result. <laughs> Sounds like Eddie. Writing and writing. No end in sight. Oh, yeah. So what's that book of yours about anyway? Um, actually, it's... A book about a retired superhero. Um, he retired and doesn't know what to do with himself. And um, actually, it's about a retirement home for <laughs> superheroes. And, and Hey, Nina, if you could have any superpower, what would you have? Yeah, you know, I think superpowers are overrated. I'd have an invisible jet. Hmm. 
Interesting. Well, I need to use the little boy's room. Uh, me too. <clears throat> Did they just go to the bathroom together? I try to ignore the little things they do together. <laughs> You know, they never actually introduced us. Yeah, yeah. Arvina, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Oh man, that was a close call. She found out about that book too soon. She would freak. Good call in the bathroom situation. Eddie, I actually have to go to the bathroom. Oh. Oh, okay. I guess I should leave. Wait. Wait. So what's your plan? I thought you said I should leave. I can hold it for a second. I, I don't have a plan. You don't have a plan? You want me to believe that right now you're just winging it? I have no idea what I'm doing right now. Well, I know that. Do you want to just hang out with her tonight? Tonight I'm just... I'm just taking things as they come. I'm not fighting anything. I'm not thinking anything. I'm not overthinking anything. I'm certainly not planning anything. I, know, I guess I should just get back out there. Yes, you should. Hey, sorry about that. Oh, sorry to be so rude. Veronica, Nina, Nina, Veronica, let me move this out. Yeah, Mr. Banners, we already took care of that. Thank you. What were you guys talking about? Nothing, just a little girl talk. I uh, don't trust girl talk. So, tell me again, how did you get this old desk? Um, they were throwing them out. You were just walking by and they were throwing them out? Yeah, they were just throwing them out. You're talking about when Eddie got thrown out of old elementary school? <laughs> we are now. No, we're not. <laughs> Eddie used to go there at night so that he could write. Max. Nope. Max, please continue. Eddie would go to the school at night so that he could write. Uh -huh. Okay. Why? Because it's free. All right? And I was writing memories about the school, and the janitor just let me in, and I just camp out there. Okay, then you got kicked out? Uh... Yeah, I know what you were thinking. It's not because I brought a girl there. No, I no, haven't dated please, anyone please. since I'm you. Just, I'm okay? just curious. All I'm saying I just is, I just it's not, it's not even that great of a story. Okay? It's not even that great no, of a story. This is a great story. It's Hall of Fame. So, Eddie falls asleep. And then he wakes up the next morning in the middle of a class. Obviously, I scared the hell out of these little kids. <laughs> right? Yeah, you think? It's like 20 degrees below outside. I'm wearing like my old tattered torn jacket so I look vaguely homeless. The teacher, I guess she just chalks it up to an act of survival. I mean, they brought me breakfast. They gave me a new coat. I mean, they weren't... Oh, they were okay, wait, nice they people. gave you a new coat? Yes, they and did. you took it? Yeah, I was barely oh, making rent then. All right, but in your mind, is that a, like the same as being homeless? My coat was old and tattered. Plus, I don't want to get Henry in trouble. I mean, I was doing wait it for second, him. Wait, wait, wait. Who's Henry? Is it when he has Henry the janitor? Yes. Oh, gosh. You're always looking out for people in this cold, hard world, aren't you? I gave the shoes back. They gave you shoes, too? Yes. Okay, so you felt guilty, hopefully. <laughs> no, they were too small anyway. They were like rubbing in the back. <laughs> you know, Eddie, you never cease to amaze me. No wonder you want to stay up all night tonight. You probably can't sleep with some of the things that you've done. You know, you don't have to be so mean. I'm not, I'm not getting mean. You know what, you guys, could you excuse us for a second? Yes, us pertain to you and I both, Edward. <sighs> Told you it was a great story. Have a seat. So you should play a song for me now. I should? Yes. Right now would be the perfect time. Well, I don't really know what to play. I mean, I've been caught up in so many other things. I've been writing a little, but...
No, you don't have to be so mean. You know, I'm, I'm not mean, but you put people in awkward situations with your little schemes. I don't have schemes. Well, Zaddy, something is going on here. You know, no one put a gun to your head to be here right now. Yeah, I know. You, know, you, you are in charge of your own life. You can't <sighs> blame anybody for where you are right now. Yeah, you know, I'm not really blaming anybody for where I am, but I have a feeling that you blame me for where you are in life. I don't blame you for anything. I mean... Uh, yeah, breaking up and, and the breakup and the way we broke up didn't help. You know, it didn't make me a stronger person. I mean, maybe now after some time, but not back then. You know, Eddie, it was bad, but the world didn't explode and catch on fire. You are so melodramatic. We've known each other since we were kids. We've been a couple for seven years. I'm sorry, but... I I was kind of used to you being in my life. Yeah, you know, and I think that's part of the problem. You got too comfortable. People break up all the time and they get over it. So... So, you're over it. You're saying you're not? No, I mean, no, I, I have. I have. I just, you know, I don't, I don't think about the breakup in such a detached way. <laughs> I'm not detached. I mean, it was bad for me too, but you know, you just, you've got to move on. Don't you remember that day? Like I was holding my glasses in my hands. They got knocked out when you grabbed my arm, and then they got ran over by that bike messenger. I got down on my hands and knees trying to find those glasses. I looked up, and all I could see was your out-of-focus face. I stood up, and you were gone. It took me hours to get home. No one would help me. I, I couldn't see. I couldn't do anything. It took me a week to get new glasses. I got fired. Remember how much of a jerk my boss was? No, I spent that entire week lost. I'm sorry, Eddie. Things just got out of control, and and I had to move on. I think about us a lot. I even wrote a book about us. You wrote, a, like, a, a book? A book about us? You did? It's called, um... Uh... Biting the Hand. It's a graphic novel. So it's a comic book. It's a novel that's illustrated. It's written from the perspective of our old cat. Hmm. Remember Charles? Hmm, little Charlie. <laughs> I miss him. Yeah. Remember when we used to make fun of him when he used to jump up on my typewriter and we'd pretend like he was writing? <laughs> it's it's kind of like that. It's kind of a, a tell-all about us, you know. Well, you know, I'm kind of afraid to ask, but I think I might like to read it. You, you have it here? May I see it? What was that? That was the average person playing the guitar. Oh. So now I know that anything that you play for me has to be better than that. <clears throat> oh, sorry guys, I just wrap. Eddie! What me? What's wrong? <laughs> the guitar was out of tune. So I'm not as bad as I sounded. No, you're bad. <laughs> but I guess it didn't help that the guitar was out of tune. You should play me something new. Are you still writing? Well, there's one, but I don't know. It might seem kind of depressing or sappy. Well, that's for me to decide. What's this? It's the book. I mean, it, it probably needs some editing, but... Um... Do you think? Is this every conversation we ever had? How long is it? 1,200 pages. 
Give or take a page. I don't know what to say. It's uh, overwhelming. Well, you don't have to read it all in one night. <laughs> no, not the book. You are overwhelming. I mean, I haven't seen you in how long, and then you show me this. What am I supposed to think? You don't have to think anything. Let's just let's just go with the flow. <laughs> you know, Eddie, it, it, it must be nice to say that you want to go with the flow and stay up all night, but I have to wake up in the morning. Why think about it right now? Let's just enjoy tonight and we'll just figure everything else out tomorrow. You definitely look and sound a little better. Hmm. Well, I'm getting better. Barely. Can you uh, help me move something real quick? Uh, yeah, sure, sure. Hey, um, Max, don't let her convince you to let her leave. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm surprised you're still here. Now's your chance to escape. Oh, I can leave any time I want to. You can? How have you been? Okay. Writing some new music. Eddie and I are working on the book, yeah. slowly. Well, we all seem to be a little bit stuck in life these days. Did I say I was stuck? No, no, I just, I meant, like, I'm not, but well, maybe I am. I don't know. You know, for what it's worth, Eddie still talks about you all the time. I think I earned a degree in psychology just talking him out of his depression. You know, that week that you when you two broke up, that was a dark time. Max, after Eddie lost his mother, he was never really the same. He used to carry around in his wallet the one and only picture of the two of them together. I used to try to tell him, maybe you should take it out. Like, what if something happens to it? But he wouldn't. I guess he just wanted her close by. He still carries it with him. He does? Mm -hmm. So, how did the two of you meet? Well, this is actually our first date. <laughs> Wait, first date? <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, Max, what are you doing? Uh, it's Eddie. Eddie. Uh, so you got caught in his little tractor beam yeah, then, huh? as usual. Hmm. Well, you guys should go out and do something. Something fun. Actually, I should leave. It's probably no fun watching Eddie and I argue all night long. No, it's, it's no fun watching anyone argue, but it would be a lot less fun if you left and then we left and Eddie was here by himself. That would be depressing. Well, what should we do? We should go out. We should all go out together and we should do something, anything, anything active. I just can't take any more pictures of you guys sitting on the couch. <laughs> so let's go. Where should we go? Would you buy a girl an ice cream? Sure. Hey guys. 
What'd I miss? We are leaving, and you are coming with us. Where are we going? Adventures. Where are we going? To follow us, Edward. Where are we going? Out of the room. Guys, where are we going? Where are we going? Guys. weren't exactly made for hiking. <laughs> well, you aren't exactly prepared for a zombie attack. I hate zombies. She wouldn't last very long either. During a zombie attack? Yeah. She would curl up in a ball and cry. Mm-hmm. You'd be the first one to go. Max, I think you have to come to terms with the fact that she may not make it. Okay. I guess. Eddie, what in God's name are you talking about? Survival. I'm talking about survival. I have these dreams all the time that I'm that I'm that I'm running and trying to escape straight out of a horror movie. I think I'd do pretty well. So how would I do? Well, you're you're in fairly good shape. Male. Smart. How are you at running and jumping? Well, I haven't had to do either recently, but I think I can pull it together if I was being chased by the undead. Mm. You might be the weakest link. Keep in mind, she's afraid of zombies. She's gonna be one of those zombies chasing you. You might be more of a liability than you think. You're insane. Why? Because you're proud of being prepared for a zombie attack. Yes, I am. And you, unfortunately, are not. Not what? What do you mean? Your boots. They're not exactly good for running. Okay, I'm wearing these boots because I had to do a presentation at work today. And then I went out with colleagues to that party. I might not be prepared for a zombie attack, but you know what I am prepared for? Paying rent. All I'm saying. I told you so. He's drunk. That's a bum. Yeah, that's a zombie bum.
Wow. That girl can run. You know what, maybe that, maybe that idea of yours wasn't so bad after all. I just wish you would have told me that you weren't going to be paying our rent. It's over, all right? We can take this money and we can set up shop somewhere else. Besides, I mean, this money is really going to get us where we need to go. Do you still have it with you? Well, yeah, I wasn't going to leave it laying around the apartment. <laughs> maybe you should give it to me. Look, it's going to be fine. I just feel like okay. Max, I'd like to go take a picture of you. You could just drift in outer space. Would you? Just go for a ride? Sure. No. Just be a test subject. I mean if you could just if you could just drift for as long as you could live. I mean you would see things that nobody else would ever get a chance to see. I mean you gotta die sometime, right? You have way too much time on your hands, Eddie. You know, life is full of choices. And you are the sum total of all of those choices. So when you answer a question like that, it says a lot about who you are. Oh, yeah. What, am I interviewing for a job? You can be so nihilistic sometimes, Eddie. You know that? I'm not. I'm not nihilistic. I just... I just think there's a lot of stuff out there. Sure, there's a lot of stuff here on Earth too, but you don't seem to be at all interested in it. Why don't you spend some time down here with the rest of us? You, know, you like this beautiful little cloud that never seems to run out of rain. I guess we should start heading to the observatory. Eddie, I've got to get going home. I've got to wake up in a few hours. Come on, it's one night. It's not going to kill you. Plus, you promised. <laughs> Don't be a child, okay? Don't ruin tonight. We can do this some other time. No. No, that's not good enough. You know, people make promises like that all the time, and they never follow through. Remember that first summer we spent together? I used to drive an hour and a half just to come and say goodnight to you. Just to give you a good night kiss. What does that have to do with me being erect by Everything. You're going to live life and live it now, not later. So what's the plan? I'm headed home. We, we, we can watch the sunrise from our room. She's not headed home. You know, if you're tired, we can just do this again another night. No offense. Thank you. You're a really nice girl, but this is really none of your business. Hey, don't talk to her like that, Eddie. Why did she get involved? Look, we're leaving. We're packing, okay? We need to pack. Wait, packing for what? Our fearless leader here got us kicked out of the apartment. I didn't get us kicked out. You know, even if you, had, you hadn't stashed the money in the apartment, it would have been nice to know that the entire apartment was getting kicked out. You know, so, so I can find a place to live. This is too much for me. I've got to go. Nina. Nina!
Sorry the night ended the way it did. I had a great time, though. I did, too. Did? Yeah, I mean, Eddie is so caught up in his own world and seeing Nina again, I'm sure he had no idea what he was saying. He should. Well, it sounds like Michelle's party really picked up. I forgot about that. Yeah, it does sound like that. You know, we were gonna stay up all night. This is the plan, right? Not over yet. What do you say you and I go take some pictures of that sunrise, get some breakfast? I think that's a great idea. Okay. thought you said you had to work early. Well, I did go home, but there's something that I wanted to ask you face to face. Okay. The whole universe, the stars, the planets, and the moon were all created for me to meet you. Did you mean that? Of course. Well, if you did mean it, then you've got to do a lot more than just write it down on a piece of paper and hand it to me. What can I do? Why won't you look at me? What happened to you? <sighs> Nothing. I just, just got into a bit of a fight. Wait, a fight with who? With Max? <laughs> no, but Max might want to punch me out after he finds out what happened to his money. You got robbed? Something like that. I, I really gotta sit down. How are you gonna take care of yourself? You don't even have a place to live. I know. I know. Do you think I like living my life this way? Do you think I like myself? I'm aware of all the time that I spend running from reality. I mean, my head is always in the clouds. I daydream way too much. Anything seriously. I get it. Eddie, those are some of the things that I actually like about you. But you have got to take charge of your life. I'm lost, Nina. I don't know anything about the world, but I do know that I need you in my life. And that book kept getting longer and longer because I didn't have anything else to write. And nothing in my life inspires me more than you. So I just kept writing and writing. I don't know how I'm gonna finish it with nothing. We even ran out of paper. Well, how about 1,200 blank pages? You've been carrying around the past way more than most people do, and it's time to let it go. You know, I came all the way over here to watch the sunrise and 
I don't think we can see it from here. Well, we made it. Barely. Barely's good enough these days. <laughs>